Hey, it's Lewis here. I am just about almost recovered, but not well enough to do a full episode of the podcast just yet. That's going to happen next week. So this week, I'm going to be releasing one of my favorite Patreon exclusive episodes. Uh, This one's an absolute banger. I really enjoy it. I think it's very funny. And there's a bunch more like it on the Patreon as well. If you want to sign up there, they're going up every single week. Patreon only. They're really good stuff, just like this episode. And I am going to be back next week in all my lispy gap to glory thank you very much for your patience i am almost better i will talk to you very soon until then enjoy this banger episode of the patreon only podcast hey welcome to the sunday supplement thank you very much for supporting welcome if this is your first one if this is your second one welcome but also i'm a little bit less excited uh we've got rosie here hello um and uh we it this is the last uh patreon version without braces Yep. So I make the most of it. I have, I'm wasting my last day without braces. I just realized, like, I went to the bathroom and I was like, man, I should be eating a burger. Yeah, or like popcorn or something that you can't. What eat. can't you eat? I haven't. I haven't even thought about what my life's <laughs> going to be like. I'm so I'm dreading the surgery and the gap tooth so much that I haven't really thought about what will ultimately be worse is the braces for like 18 months. Yeah. Well, when I had braces, I had them when I was in high school. Uh, and were you um, 28 years old in high school? Yes, I was. Oh, and, thank uh, you. That makes me I feel bought, a lot better. <laughs> I, I'd buy like the 20 cent like red skins and all that that I wasn't supposed to have. Yeah. Because there's like a big ban on those because you can pull out a bracket. And I once oh, yeah. pulled out a bracket and had to get picked up from school. Fuck no red skins. <laughs> hey, you can't say that anymore. What are they called now? What are they called now? I don't know. Are they called something different? Yeah, that's uh, Redskins is a, a slur for American natives. I almost, I almost said American Indians, which is another slur for American natives. They're called Red Rippers. Red Rippers. Red Rippers? Yeah, I guess. Oh. Am well, I going to get in trouble for saying that now? Yeah, Rosie's been cancelled. That see, this is the type Sorry. of ed, on on the on the knife's edge, edgy humor that you can expect on Patreon is is. Uh, is Rosie saying the old name for Red Rippers? No one's <laughs> calling them Red Rippers, though, here. I've never I heard, that. heard that. that name. And that name was changed like three years ago, I think. Oh. Long time ago. Um, Damn. Uh, I'm really trying to think of a, of a joke about another chocolate here, but it's really not... <laughs> really not hitting. You should... Uh, you think that's bad? You should hear the old name for Reese's Pieces. Reese used to own slaves, so... Um, oh. So we have here uh, an <laughs> we have here uh, an an article that I just saw on Twitter that I just I haven't read through it yet, but I wanted to read through it for the Patreon podcast because I I think mm-hmm. that it's just you know every now and then a, a journalist loses their mind and then writes an article about it and it's it's like mm. supposed to be like oh look at this amazing thing that happened to me and you know I've grown from this but it's actually just them destroying their own life yeah and then writing an article this is this i'm pretty sure this is one of these examples i've only seen i've seen a few tweets about this of people going why the fuck would you write this down uh so i thought we would just read through it um Mm. so we have uh the headline here this is this is by amanda trenfield uh less than a month after i met my soulmate i ended my 14 year marriage that's a potentially a really nice headline like maybe she had a horrible husband. Mm. Maybe she met the love of her life, her soulmate, and and made her life better. When I read that, that's like I'm like that's that's what I'm thinking. That's mm. not what happened. No, what <laughs> happened? Well, let's find out. I wasn't expecting a formal dinner with cheerful conference attendees in the beautiful West Australian. Oh, she's Australian. Let's go. Uh, I wasn't expecting a formal dinner with cheerful conference attendees in the beautiful West Australian town of Margaret River to turn my life upside down. I had a good life. I wasn't looking to upend it. Or was I? Okay, sociopath, let's go. I had decided only the week earlier to attend a three-day event with my husband. It wasn't in the family holiday plan and we had to arrange care for the children, but I saw it as a perfect opportunity for us to reconnect as we had become quite distant. I believe that time away from the stress of everyday life was the perfect remedy to reignite our relationship. Okay, so she's gone on a she's gone on a work trip to reignite her marriage. So already okay. that's that'd be like that'd be like me going to jazz like, "Oh, I know that 
you and me are struggling at the moment, but I've actually got a big tour in regional Queensland. Would you like to come and live in a van with me for two weeks? That might oh. fix it up. You know, like that's not... Yeah. That's that's not yeah. that's not a retreat. That's like you're taking your husband on a work trip and he can't go to the conference. And yeah. then I guess you fuck someone else at the conference. Um, we entered the magnificent oak panel dining room, taking our seats at a long, elegantly laid table. You know who else is going to get elegantly laid at the end of this article? Uh, my husband sat to my left and quickly engaged another couple in conversation. As I settled into my seat, I looked up and immediately lost my breath. When our eyes met, there was an instant familiarity that ran deeper than water cooler chat. These eyes had locked before, 12 years earlier. His name was Jason. I hadn't forgotten. Oh, they've met before. Okay, this is juicy. <laughs> the soulmate. From who? Do you, do you remember anyone from 12 years ago? I mean, you would have been, you would have been 12, 10. Yeah, I okay. don't think no. anyone that memorable. <laughs> Throughout the dinner, I was my usual animated and conversational self. Who's, who describes themselves like that? How would you describe yourself? Oh, animated and conversational. No, you're not. You're annoying. That's yeah. what you are. You're annoying and you talk too much. I'm animated and conversational. You speak over people at the dinner table. Mm. You interrupt someone else's story and go, oh, that reminds me of the time I was at the beach. Oh, yeah. When they, were, when they weren't talking about the beach. Um, uh Throughout the dinner, I was my usual animated and conversational self. I'm really judging this woman. By the end of this article, she could cure cancer. We'll see. Uh, I was, after all, in sales. I hate her. I hate her so much. Uh, the, <laughs> the group chatted happily, all of us enjoying an excellent de de degustation. Degustation of West Australian delicacies. What the fuck is that word? Man, this, what does degustation mean? If that means eating, I'm going to lose it. Degustation is the careful, appreciative tasting of various food. Focusing on the gustatory system, the senses. There's no fucking way this journalist is going to a work conference and going, oh, the food's great. No one gets good food at a work conference. She's eating mm -hmm. fucking day-old croissants in the hotel lobby. <laughs> Uh, enjoying an, an excellent degustation of West Australian delicacies. Like what? What the fuck are they... What's a delicacy in Perth? Going out without hearing a slur? Like how special? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> what, is the, what the fuck is a West... Google it. Tell me what a West Australian delicacy is. There's no way they have any delicacy. You can barely grow food up there. It's fucked. Sunburnt skin that's fallen off sunburnt tourists. What have they got? Uh, what do they eat? Perth's top dishes range. Roadkill? Like sourdough bread to Aussie classics to the more unique like kangaroo. Wow, bread. Rock, rock lobster, meat pie, pasta, barramundi, sourdough bread, kangaroo, dumplings. Yeah, so she's lamb. sitting in a fucking hotel lobby eating a four and 20 meat pie, talking to like a three that, he, that she met 12 years ago. And pretend and she's hallucinating. That's yeah, what's happening. It's all seafood. Yeah, she had really bad lobster and she's hallucinating. <laughs> As the entree was served, Jason offered me a sip of his wine. Dude, no one who's who's offering sips of wine to my girlfriend? My wife. If Cam took a sip of wine from another girl's like drink, I'd be like, hmm. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> You'd be like, Oh, that's a conversation for the ride home. The ride home's three hours. As, as the entree was served, Jason owed, offered me a sip of his wine to taste the robust old vine Shiraz. She's drinking goon out of a box. After a little banter and coaxing, I accept it. Over the course of the evening, my attraction, my attraction to Jason developed. What did he put in that wine? I soon became aware of his every breath. And I unconsciously mirrored his pace. Dude, this bitch is insane. Who watches someone else breathe and... <laughs> you fucking imagine if you're sitting there and you're eating like your meat pie from the service station. You look over and this woman's like trying to mirror, like breathe in at the same time as you. <sighs> this chick's nuts. 
I caught myself embarrassingly looking at his chest through his slim fitted white evening shirt. I'm getting a bit horny. Yes, he had a fit, toned and attractive body. But was it his chest I was drawn to? I don't know. You're the one writing the fucking article. <laughs> why is it? Why is it the, the chest? Was it the chest or was it something else? Maybe he maybe he dripped sauce on it. Hey, this episode of Spearhead Sunless is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. Uh, and I just found out uh, they they make little safety razors. These guys make like every single type of grooming product that you can ask for. That was the one thing that I was thinking, oh, I would like, wouldn't mind like a little safety razor to clean up my beard. Now they've made the Plow 2.0. So I'm going to get that and I'm going to use code Spears. I could probably ask them for it, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man of, uh, of honor. I purchase things that I like other than the things they send me, which is really nice. Uh, but I use the Manscaped products all the time. I use the lip balm. It's great. I've used the body spray. It smells really nice. Uh, I use the lawnmower 4.0 like all the time on my beard, on my nether regions uh that's that's it you know that's pretty much the limitations of the device i think keelan shaves his arm hair i wouldn't recommend that but he does it uh and you can use code spears for 20 percent off and free shipping whatever you like from the site the the lawnmower 4.0 it's really good it's much better than the previous model so if you have the old model i would recommend the upgrade uh and uh, the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe TM technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor. That's better than a lot of vibrators. A new multi function on and off switch uh, can engage a travel lock. Oh man, that would have saved me so much embarrassment in the Uber. Remember that Uber trip where my, vi my, my vibrator, my Manscaped thing went off in the car and everyone just assumed it was someone's vibrator? Because I forgot that it was in there and it was just buzzing. And then I was in the Uber Uber ride for like 20 minutes with this vibrator going off in someone's bag. And I was the whole time I was thinking, poor Rosie, how embarrassing for her. Turns out it was mine. Uh, and uh, if I had have used the travel lock that I didn't know about, that never would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. What a good feature. You know, this, this, is, the, this is what I'm saying. Manscaped.com is so good. They have features that you need that you didn't even realize that you needed. So use code SPEARS for 20% off. Support the brands and support the show. Let's get back to it. When this dessert was served, he offered me a sample of his decadent and oozy chocolate pudding. I declined, but he scooped up a generous spoonful and fed me across the table anyways. What is this chick's husband doing? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You're oh sitting next God. to her. Some guy's leaning over the table, feeding her pudding. <gasps> this no. is the, what's going on? Is he's probably just sitting there watching going, oh, fuck. I, sh I, <laughs> I shouldn't have come to this conference. Yeah, whose partner's okay with that? Especially someone they just met. I feel like if it was like a close friend or yeah. something like that, there was a very platonic relationship. Mm. Like, that's fine, but jeez. That's fine, is it? Is Oh, here's my, here's my friend Sarah. I've known her for years and she starts hand feeding him pudding. <laughs> It'd be like, yeah. oh, that's totally fine. You guys do that all the time, do you? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen her chest? Um... <laughs> You know what? I, I reckon that the husband just hates her. Anyone, anyone who says degustation can't be likable. You know, she writes for the Sydney Morning Herald and says things like decadent. I, if, if I saw her cheating on me in front of me, I'd be like, yeah, finally, a reason to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I declined, but he scooped up a generous spoonful and fed me across the table. He displayed a level of familiarity normally reserved for close friends or lovers. If anyone had been watching us, they would have been at least curious as to the nature of our relationship. What do you mean if anyone was watching? You're doing it at the table with you your colleagues. Of, yeah, work people as well. Everyone's wow. watching. I was going, oh, man, oh, fuck, I hate it when she comes to work events. That's so, that's so, like, weird. Mm. Like, that's like all of us going out and someone doing that in front of their partner. At the like, table that you're sitting at. Yeah, all of us would be like, what is going on? That's weird as so fuck. Weird. She, uh, you know why? She was so focused on trying to breathe in when he did that she didn't notice everyone else going, what the fuck's going on? Are you going to let him do that to your wife, dude? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the time the group left the restaurant late in the evening... 
Yeah, so they were at the table together. All my senses were on high alert. It was abundantly clear that the energy between Jason and me was somehow charged. I instinctively understood, though, that this was more than just lust, something I had felt many times before. Uh, so I've, I've, I always want to cheat on my husband. I also understood that it was more than simply physical attraction, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. Um, she's fallen in love with this dude because he put pudding in her mouth. Um, at the this chick must be 300 kilos at the hotel bar Jason bought me a glass of my favourite rosé we looked into each other's eyes his dark and mysterious his, her husband's dead he died on the way to the bar she didn't notice he had a heart attack where is he? yeah <laughs> what's what going on? where is this guy? his dark and his we, we looked into each other's eyes his dark and mysterious mine big and brown I, uh, and clinked glasses the electricity between us was strong and raw it travelled to my core it was so and she's rhyming now I want to be treated like a whore um, it travelled to my core it was so intense I needed to break eye contact he we the energy <laughs> it was electric my body was completely charged I was completely on this woman just took an entire paragraph to to say that her pussy was wet. Please tell me she says where the husband is at this moment. <laughs> where the fuck is this guy? Also, she hasn't really said that he's reciprocated this. Like, all they did was cheers. And she's like, oh, he wants to fuck me. All they did was cheers. And he's like, hey, I'm getting a drink. Do you want something? Yeah, that's um, that's strange. I it's I I'm hoping it gets better. I had to determinedly fight the continual pull to his side that I felt as we moved around each other throughout the evening in various conversations. What she means by that is she was following him, and he was like, "Dude, this fucking weird breathing chick keeps following me around." I tried giving her a wine. I thought that would calm her down. Turns out she's just making a mess on the floor. Um, though we were always aware of one another's location, yeah, because he was like, can you fucking get this chick away from me? She's following me around. I went to the men's bathroom. She was standing outside the door. When we locked our eyes across the room, the intensity of our stares magnified, yeah, because she was like really giving him the, the sex eyes and he was going, oh, fuck, she's looking at me from across the room. <laughs> Becoming bolder as the night progressed, we held, we held our gaze longer. Our connection deepened. I loved talking with him. I felt warm, relaxed, and safe in his presence. I felt I could truly be myself at a level I wasn't familiar with. I realized if you, if you can only feel yourself with a dude that you've met like two hours ago, either your husband is, is a monster or you're like a sociopath. You with, yeah. You're with this guy for 14 years. You've never been yourself. You might be wearing a mask, my friend, all the time. That's weird. I realised it was a feeling that I hadn't enjoyed in a long, long time, perhaps ever. Sure, we were laughing and joking like old friends, but the deepening connection through our eyes was undeniable. I have some... I, I, I reckon I could deny it. I haven't heard anything about him. This whole article is just about me and, and how he thought I was super hot. He was totally into me, but he hasn't really done... Feeding the, the the pudding is a is a bit of a hint, but other than that, he, they've just had a conversation. Mm. They haven't really done anything else. My behaviour that evening was uncharacteristic. It doesn't doesn't sound like it. I stayed out way longer than I normally would. I'm usually an early to bed, early to rise type, but this was no ordinary evening. I was about to cheat on my husband. <laughs> I was in no hurry to lose our connection. In fact, I wanted time to stand still. I wanted to remain in the energy, our energy, forever. The bar called... Where is your husband? This was a trip to rekindle their marriage. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What are you doing? Where's your husband? Where is he? What's he doing now? That's horrible. Can you imagine <laughs> Babe, Can we go, guy? please? No, I'm following around a stranger. Imagine being that guy. Mm. You're like, oh... Our marriage is dying. I'll come on your work trip with you. Yeah, and then I'll just come get on your work trip. ditched for like some other person. Come on my work trip while I come on my work colleague. Oh. The bar called last drinks and the evening, now the early morning, came to an end. The goodbye was overt, open and revealing of our mutual affection. We enjoyed a body hugging embrace, a hug, where I whispered into his ear, I know where you live. I've got the kids. Fuck me or I'll kill him. Um, well, I whispered into his ear, 
This isn't over. I need to see you again. He pulled his hands tightly on my waist and pulled me close. Yes, he replied. Okay, so he is into her. Mm. Where's your husband? <laughs> Where is he? Is he watching this? Is he in the corner masturbating? What's going on? As I danced back to my room feeling vulnerable but also unexpectedly whole, I couldn't wipe the smile from my face. I'd never felt anything like this before. I'd never experienced this sensation. I didn't understand the energy. It was an out-of-body or perhaps an in-body experience. Another paragraph about having a wet pussy. I now know without hesitation, without question, without any doubt in my mind, my body and my heart, that the energy we experienced that evening was our souls connecting. She's going to kill him. She's going to kill this man. And she's going to she's gonna eat him so that they can be together forever. And, he can, and she can absorb his soul. I left Margaret River a different woman. You hugged a guy. He fed you pudding and you had a hug. And then he was like, yeah, I, I guess I would fuck you. God, can you imagine? Can you imagine now being her like husband of fourteen years reading this article, <laughs> oh, and no. her kids reading, He's reading this article? He gets halfway through the article. Goes, really, you never felt like that? Never? I okay, gave. Um, I we've surely we've had pudding before. That sucks. How embarrassing! I knew in my heart, in my soul, uh, in the very fabric of my being, that I had profoundly changed. What's going on? No, you didn't. You met a hot person. You profoundly changed. Sounds like me watching the, the Amber Heard on trial. I couldn't articulate the feelings, the sensation, the experience, the connectedness that I experienced with Jason was at a, a level impossible to describe. Well, you've spent six fucking pages trying, so I reckon you're actually nailing it. All I know for certain was that this one encounter, what's the bet that this this Jason guy is like a real solid six? Like, you know when your yeah. friend's like, I met the hottest guy. You're like, oh, really? <laughs> Show me. Oh, he was so fucking hot. Really? Yeah. I can't believe he chose me. They show you a picture and you're like, that's just that's just a tradie. That's, I've seen, I see that guy every time I leave my house. That's just a bloke. I feel like you've said that to me before when I was... Like, oh, <laughs> I definitely the, have. This is the hottest guy, and you're like, Rosie, it's just a, it's just a guy. <laughs> that's just a, that's just a person. I'm like, it's not an, it's not an ugly person, <laughs> but, it, but it's, not, it's just a guy. He looks nice. Yeah, you've definitely said that to me before. <laughs> you know when you do the thing that you do. Um, the. The next few days were a complete blur. I couldn't make any sense of my feelings. I couldn't. Uh, uh, I couldn't escape unrelenting thoughts of Jason. Isn't that uh, isn't that a, a movie? Uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Um, I that's a real deep cut horror movie reference that one person is really laughing at. I certainly couldn't fathom how I'd resume my normal life, a full time career in financial services. Oh, he's a he's an accountant. This guy's ugly. This guy's ugly yeah. ass. She probably just met the only white guy who works in accounting. You know, and she's like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. um, how would I resume my normal life? A full full time career in financial services. The care of two young children. Oh, she's got kids. What a terrible I know. person. That's like I was thinking of like, oh, my God. What are the what is the kids going to think of this article when they read it? Household chores, Poor dad. social engagements, being a wife. Man, you're at the bottom of the list. If I read that shit and she and she listed me after two spots after household chores, like really, I'm a lower priority than scrubbing the toilet. <laughs> you know, at least uh, at least kids made it uh, above chores, but still below full time career in financial services. What I did understand was that the successful, comfortable, and somewhat predictable life I had spent 20 years building was now of no consequence. I simply didn't care. Yes, yeah, sociopath. She's lost it. Simply didn't care. I simply did not care. It's of no consequence. I just met my soulmate. What could possibly be more important than that? Your kids, bitch! <gasps> Dude. Oh. They didn't even have sex. He was just like, yeah, you're pretty hot, I guess. I'll see. How can you, you know? be like, that's the rest of my life right there after, what, a 45-minute yeah. interaction? What's the bet oh. that... that well, how she explains it is not how it actually happened. Like, she was like, oh, we had, like, the sexiest body con conforming hug. And I whispered, I need to see you again. And he said, yes. 
And then and uh, then my pussy tingled and so did his cock. That's... What's the bet that what actually happened was he was like, all right, I'm off. He's like, bye. Gave him a hug. She's like, oh, we should see each other again. He's like, yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and then left. He's like, oh, yeah, so I'm sure you'll follow sad. me home. That sounds like me in year nine when I had my 15th birthday party. My crush yeah. came to my birthday and he hugged me. And I was like, oh, my God. This means so much. Yeah. This is a special hug. Yeah, this is 15-year-old shit. Yeah, like when like, everything yeah. in your mind just blows like, up. Oh, my God. I had no idea that girls weren't gross. <laughs> you know, that's that's like me sitting in, in seventh grade when, I, when, when my knee brushed against a girl I was sitting next to and she'd shaved her legs and I was like, what the fuck? She looks so awesome. This is amazing. We're going to get married. <laughs> and she was like, uh-huh. Can you not bump me? Um, okay. I just met my... Okay, so... Well, we're at the end here. All right. Okay. Dude, I'm so excited for the conclusion of this because if we're almost at the end, I don't think this ends with like a happy marriage. Being a wife... Uh, what I did understand that the successful, comfortable and somewhat predictable life I'd spent 20 years building was of was now of no consequence. I simply did not care. I just met my soulmate. What could possibly be more important than that? That reminds me of the uh, the quote from American Psycho after he kills all of, all of those women. And he goes, I simply am not there. <laughs> um, less than a month after meeting Jason, having, n- having had no communication with him since our time in Margaret River, I ended my 14-year relationship with my husband. The woman who had been so careful, so planned, so organized and so clear about the path in her, her life would take had just made the most dramatic decision of her life, one affecting those dearest to her, her family. Hang on. So she, so, she, so she never she never got with the other guy. <laughs> So she left her husband and her kids to not get laid. <laughs> Wait, she never got with the guy? Doesn't look for she doesn't say that she did. Oh, it's from a book she wrote. When a soulmate says no. <laughs> Burn that book. Why would you write a book about that? I fucked up my life for a guy who wasn't interested in me. Fuck. When a soulmate says no, no. When a creepy bitch ruins her life and gets rejected for being weird. That's Could you so imagine crazy. if a guy that you met once a month ago was like, oh, I just dumped my wife for you. And you're like, dude, we had a conversation. We had pudding. That's so bad. It must have been a really bad marriage for her to be like. For him. Or for him, but also maybe for her because if she's getting, like, attention or something for the first time in a long time. Yeah, I guess. Just from, like, a random stranger and she's like, oh, my God, I'm in love. Her yeah, I guess marriage it, it, must if, have been pretty, like, And if her bland. husband is just ignoring yeah. someone else, like, trying to fuck his wife. Yeah, He's exactly. got to hate her. He must be like, oh, this, this chick. So it mustn't be good for uh, either of them, I guess. Yeah. And let's look, read the blurb of this book. It's $43. That's the biggest L. $43 for a fucking book about being weird and then getting rejected? How do you write a book about that? Here's, here's, how, the, here's how the book should end. Uh, but uh, it turns out I fucked up and he said no. Now I'm, now I'm single and lonely and my kids hate me. Um, all right. Amanda never imagined that after uprooting her comfortable, stable life to make room for her soulmate that he would decide to go his own way. Soulmate. They both agreed that their connection was was unbelievably cosmic. Did they? Did they both agree that, or did you just write that then? Mm, yeah, some people say our breakup was a mutual decision. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. No. If I if I was single and I met a girl and I described your connection as unbelievably cosmic, I'd pr- she'd probably be my girlfriend. I mm. wouldn't. I wouldn't go. Oh man, met the perfect girl for me. Turned it down. Yeah, no one does that. No. Uh, uh, So why did he say no? Here we go. A fearless voyage, uh, definitely fearless, of self-discovery fueled by stubbornness, tenacity, and she she didn't write this bit. (laughs) (laughs) 
This, this is the publisher. <laughs> Uh, a foolish voyage of self-discovery fueled by stubbornness and being a stupid idiot, tenacity and an unquenchable thirst for dick. Answers, sorry. To the great mysteries of the soul, Amanda shares the intimate details of her transformation from lovesick hot mess to self-actualized superstar with unapologetic vulnerability and effervescent humor. Through the exploration of grief, sp grief spirituality, energy, therapy, self-acceptance, and the undeniable healing power of a good Diana Ross song. This sounds like the worst book of all time. <laughs> Amanda's story serves as an example of what is possible when we fuck up our life, when we dare to dream of a life that's nothing short of miraculous. Yeah, you crash and burn. You go, man, if I just leave my husband and my kids and my life and, and confess my love to a guy I met that one time, every, I'll have a miraculous life. That's what happens when you when you believe that a, a, your life could be nothing short of miraculous. You crash and burn and write a whole book that costs forty three dollars. Amanda Trenfield, who is this woman? Why would you write a book about this? A whole book about getting rejected. What does she say? I mean, the the her connection to him must have been electric if she's thinking about it that much that she had a whole. Maybe maybe the book is so long. Maybe it had to become a book because she had to write 35 other paragraphs about having a wet pussy. <laughs> um, oh, she's a life coach. If you can't, I wouldn't want to If you can't do <laughs> coach, would you, would you sign up to her, her, her classes, Rosie? Absolutely not. You don't I'm think so? all for women empowerment. But yeah, like, of course, yeah. Uh, also writing that, like, can you imagine just being the husband and the kids reading that book about your mum being like, I How don't hurtful. care about anyone yeah. but this guy my life that is I don't boring. know. And my, my kids are boring and predictable. Oh, I hate waking up every morning and, and, uh, and hanging out with my kids and doing the chores. And also I have a husband somewhere. I haven't seen him for ages. Yeah, like, I know that's probably not her intention, but it definitely mm. comes across that way. As it's like written. Totally narcissist sociopath behavior of like having an epic fuck up and being like, I reckon that other, that I'm actually doing the right thing and everyone else is wrong and they could learn to be more like me. Mm. <laughs> That's what that is. So she's got three classes here. Okay. Um, reinvention and transformation. She nailed that. I would sign up. For, if I really wanted to reinvent myself, I would go to her. She crushed it, to be honest. That's exactly what she did. Um, unique human design. You are meant to be different from everyone else. Embrace it. Well, not different in that way because I feel like you just tanked your whole life. Uh, here's a good one, though. Here's a good one that I'm sure she knows a lot about. Relationships and family dynamics. Understand and appreciate the most important people in your life before you abandon them for a dude you had a conversation with. <laughs> what a legend. Yes. Book a discovery call. Oh, fuck. I would love to book a discovery call. I don't know anyone that actually pays for a life coach. Isn't a life coach just like a like a shit therapist? Like an unqualified I think so. Like it's so expensive as well, I believe. Book online, let's find out how much well if it books forty three dollars, I I wouldn't want to know what a I reckon it's something ridiculous like Here we go, relationship and family. Ninety minutes via Zoom, three sessions. I mean that's the next three podcast episodes, isn't it? I really, really hate my husband. Pricing plan. Come on, let's go. All right, let's go here. Um, what do we have? Two thirty PM. I should be free. Um next. Come on. Oh, it's got to be so expensive because it's not going to tell me the price yeah i was going to say it's something it's going to be something ridiculous you need to purchase a pricing plan to book this service <laughs> what is that that's suspicious <laughs> that sounds so expensive what is a pricing plan okay well i can't find anything here i'm not i'm not going to give this woman money and encourage mm. this behavior um no well, that's that's great. Are you thinking of of abandoning your family anytime soon after that, Rosie? You, you feeling inspired? Uh, I'm gonna say no. I'm I'm gonna sell the house. <laughs> I, I'm out of here after reading that. After after listening to that story, I reckon what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out to a bar, 
and I'm going to go, I'm going to find first girl I see, right? And I'll describe her as electric and cosmic and, uh, and orgasmic. And then I'll show you a photo and you'll be like, oh, that's a person. She's definitely alive. That's, she's <laughs> absolutely human. I wouldn't yeah. say she's ugly, but she's def- she definitely exists. She's real. And then what I'll do is I'll buy her a drink and she'll go, sorry, I have a boyfriend. And then I'll come home and I'll go, Jazz, you're fucking out of here. I've met my soulmate. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't imagine like someone doing that. Also when I'm in the room, like if Cam did that and I was like sitting right next to him watching it all, I think I would just start crying. Which you should. Yeah. You should do that. If you didn't, he should dump you. You know? Oh, yeah. If you were like, oh, there's my man cheating on me again, whatever. Boring. <laughs> this guy sucks anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I just feel like though she said so little about her husband that I feel like if there if there was something bad to say about him, she would. All yeah. she had was, oh, it, it's a little bit predictable. Mm. You know? Yeah. I guess, yeah, they said, that, oh, we need to rekill. So maybe they weren't fucking as much as they should, I guess. Yeah, there would have had to be something going wrong mm. at home. For, the, for him to just not really comment on it. Very interesting solution to that problem, though. It's mm. just is just going, sorry, kids. Mama's going to get rejected by a guy I talked to that one time. Um, all right. I think I'm going to end it there because I need to uh, call the bank and uh, sort out this mortgage because I'll be selling the house. Um, thank you very much for your support. All of the, the money this month will go towards tickets to uh, just a location that I'll book on a whim to start my new life. Um, with the uh, with my new soulmate, who I assume I'll just meet down at the cafe at some point. Mm, yeah. um, so, cool. Are you excited for 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 your new life? Because I'm gonna still gonna need an editor. Yes. So, yeah. So you okay? Cool. So I don't know what's a what's a what's a really cosmic place to go and find down new partners. Uh the Grand Hotel in Frankston. <laughs> 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 yeah, you'd be able to find a partner there for sure, but it'll it'll cost you. It'll be cheap, but it will still will be, you know, transaction actionary. Um, all right, I'm gonna end it there. Bye. Bye.